Since I'm still currently in Minnesota away from my studio, I thought what better place to do a spoiler video on twisters than right here in the cornfield. And since I always go all in for my audience, why not go all in the cornfield as well and talk about the move? No, I'm not doing that. No, that, that's ridiculous. We are going to talk about twisters in a spoiler video though, so join me. I'm old enough to remember seeing the original Twister in theaters when it came out. Bill Paxton, Helen Hunt, love my Pax, pouring out for him. Helen Hunt, Helen Hunt, dear gods, no one looked better in a wife beater than she did. I know, not an appropriate term in this day and age, but that's what we called it then, okay? That's what we called it. While Glenn Powell is certainly dreamy on the eyes for some, he's no Bill Paxton. And Twisters is no twister, in, in my humble opinion. A fine movie, all the same. I didn't mind Twisters, I had a good time with it. You're looking for a loud, big budget blockbuster, you could do worse. Um, and that's where Twister comes into play. Listen, Twisters, I, I said it's basically a copy of what came before. Some people were upset, said, how dare you, Adam? It's a totally different movie. Yes, there's still storm chasers. Yes, there's still a big budget group of storm chasers that's essentially doing the same thing, trying to get readings on these twisters. Yes, there's still a fish out of water character. It's not an ex-wife this time. It's a, it's a blogger or a, someone doing a piece on one of the influencer chaser guys. And yes, there is a Philip Seymour Hoffman type as well, although nowhere near as funny as Philip Seymour Hoffman. And sure, it pretty much follows the exact same template as Twister, but these are two totally different movies. They're not shoot up a bunch of little balls into the tornado to get readings. I mean, they do at the beginning, but the main point is to shoot up some chemicals to stop the tornado from coming at all. Or I guess stop it while it's formed. It's very weird. <laughs> the plot of this movie is pretty insane. Now, contrary to popular belief, Twisters is not a sequel to Twister. It's not a prequel. It's not a remake. It's not a reboot. It's just its own thing, but also kind of not. It's kind of the, the copy, like I said. It follows the playbook. Sure, new characters, a somewhat new adventure, but basically it's the same film in modern day setting. So let's go over the playbook. Well, the first movie fires up with tragedy. Helen Hunt goes into that little cellar, the storm cellar out on the farm. Her dad dies, gets sucked away. In this new movie, we see our young perky protagonist, Katie, I think her name is, it might be Kate, might go by both. We're gonna just go with Katie for the time being. She's out with her friends, her nerdy friends, and they're chasing a tornado to see if her concoction works. This concoction is going to open up and go into the wind, and it's gonna, so supposedly, the idea is to tamper it down. It's to get rid of the tornado altogether with science. This does not work, and in fact, it seems to piss the clouds off even more because this guy gets hungry, starts barreling down on the protagonist and her friends. They run under a bridge to take shelter, and they start getting picked off by the wind one by one, leaving only Katie and her one buddy who looks like a young John Leguizamo left standing. We're going to fast forward five or so years. I think it's five years, but don't quote me on that. And Katie's working for some boring weather company. She doesn't like her job. She's not being utilized to her full potential, short for potential. And luck would have it, her buddy John Leguizamo Jr. is in the mix looking for someone just like her, an expert in the field of picking up dandelions and letting them float away to come out and help them and big business get these three little devices all around a tornado so they can triangulate the cyclone and put it in the computer. Now, if you remember, the first movie had Dorothy. It is in the beginning of this one too, but they go all in on the Wizard of Oz references. The new plates they put down are all named after those plucky characters from that film. You have the lion, the tin man, the scarecrow. Those things have to be set up appropriately. While that crew is getting set up, though, we're going to get introduced to Glenn Powell's character. He's a storm chaser, but he's like a storm thrill seeker. He's an influencer online. I'm not really sure where, if it's YouTube or TikTok or Twitch. It's a little cloudy with a chance of meatballs, but he's out there with his bros. 
they have harnesses, they have drills that put that truck into the fucking ground, and they can withstand at least an F1 hitting them. He's just in it for the money. Not really. That's not the case, Bill Paxton. He actually just, he, he loves tornadoes. He's fascinated by them. But there's also deep layer to this character. He wants to give back to these communities that are ravaged by tornadoes. They sell their merch and they give that money to the people through food, through water, through whatever means they need to survive. It's very humbling. It's very it's very touching stuff for someone, I'm sure. To me, it's all very superficial, but again, it gives a little bit of credence to the character. It lets you know he's not just a surface level douchebag. And I will say the relationship with Katie is pretty solid over this film. They're gonna grow together. They're gonna learn a little bit about each other. And that's after we follow the template where a tornado hits, they chase it, they screw up, they do it again, and then they, they even have this middle section that's exactly the same as Twister, where tw in Twister, they're at, I think, a drive-in or an outdoor theater, and they're just hanging out. They're not expecting another giant tornado to come and ravage the place, but that's what happens. In the new movie, they're at a rodeo, and the same thing happens. They're caught off guard. This movie is beat for beat the same. John Leguizamo Jr. has a bit of depth, too, because even though he knows he's working for a guy that's not quite on the up and up, this builder, this contractor, wants to go to houses that were just taken by the, the tornado, and he wants to reclaim them for his own. He's going to give these people a bunch of money, and then he can develop his property there. It's a, it's a little shady. It's a little seedy. So there is a bit of a love triangle situation going on between Powell, John Leguizamo Jr., and Katie. It never really goes anywhere, although, you know, you can you can assume that she's going to get the better looking of the two, the, the ripped guy that's got the influencer stuff going on. He, he, he has the cliche chase after at the airport at the end. But there's no kissing, there's no date. That's the big separator between the two movies where... Twister 1 really does focus more on the relationship and the falling out of the, the main couple and the ex-wife kind of lying in the weeds. This one just kind of pussyfoots around it all. Because that pesky new generation doesn't want to see any of that physical stuff. Gross. As far as frustrating stuff in this movie, usually when you have a blockbuster flick like this, there's characters that make dumb choices or things that just seem to happen so the script can push forward. I didn't really get a lot of that there. I wasn't too frustrated by anything. Katie, you know, she has that moment where she's kind of uh, gets scared. She has a little PTSD and she doesn't knock down the, the Dorothy 2.0 stuff properly. She doesn't lock it in place or she lies and says that the tornado is going to be in a different spot than it is. Eh, it was okay. It was like a one and done moment. It was a little odd. It's like, wow, she was scared and now she's not. So it was like a one time thing and then she moved on pretty quick. So good for her. And as for tie-ins or references to the first one, I didn't really notice any at all. They didn't do the cow flying by. Instead a chicken landed. I think that was their nod to the first one. Like, hey, we have a different barnyard animal in this film. My wife swears that when I looked down, I guess, and blinked for a second while drinking some coffee, Coke, that the mom of Katie had a photo in her hand at one time that had Helen Hunt's character in the picture with her. I don't know. I call bullshit on that. I don't think that happened, but I didn't see it. You know, blink and you miss sort of a, a cameo. So maybe, maybe that happened and that would be the only reference. I am honestly surprised that they did not use Helen Hunt in this movie as the mom of Katie. It seemed like a slam dunk or at least make her an acquaintance. Because Katie's mom mentions she's got a friend she's on the phone with, or someone was coming over, I thought she said at one point, but no one does. It seemed like a, a perfect moment to just have that cameo in there for the fans, to be like, hey, here's the wink, here she is, the OG. But they didn't, they kept it its own, and I guess in a sense I appreciate that. But also... They kind of redid the same movie anyways, so might as well go all in. Katie at one point, which was random, had this slingshot-esque camera that went across her chest. It looked hot. It was a great look. And I guess it was a holster for her camera that she took photos with, but she only does it that one time. I, I don't know. It's just a weird scene. She's like a professional photographer for a second, or she's really into photography, taking a picture of the storm, and then that's just never mentioned again. And I think that's the big issue I have with this one. Again, it's a fine, superficial film you can watch once, have a good time with it, and never really think about it once again. But I think the big problem is that makes the first one so good is the characters all had motivations for why they were doing it. Katie didn't really seem to have any. She just, I guess, thought tornadoes were cool. 
which to be fair, they are, and that's fine. It's just not as compelling as losing your father when you're just a kid and you make it your life's work to make it so that no one else has to suffer the same kind of loss. And so you are just infatuated by hunting these things down almost to a point where you have a death wish. You don't care if you live or die going through the storms, trying to dominate it and get that Dorothy flight up in the air. The, the love story stuff in the original, I think added some of the dimension to the character where, hey, it's not just, uh, I'm angry and I'm bitter. There is some love there. There is some loss that can be rekindled. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know, the, the, that's just missing in this new one. I also thought that the rich bad guys didn't really play into the story that well. They didn't mesh as much as in the original because both sets of people are going after the same goal. The storm chasers want to get Dorothy up. You have the bad guys that also are trying to do their own version of Dorothy, get it into the sky so they can make a bunch of money. They're not in it for the same reasons. In the new movie, you have the thrill seeker dude and then you have the big business guys. They don't have the same goals. Powell's character is doing it for one, thrill seeking, two, helping out the communities that get ravaged by these storms. The big business side is all for building houses. They're not one-to-one. -one. There's no direct conflict even. And I know the thing that ties it together is the relationship Katie has with one of the guys on the job. It's just not quite as interesting as what I'm getting at. Also, one last thing I really loved about the original that the new one fails to do is I liked that they treated the tornado almost as a super villain, almost as this larger than life, scary beast. It roared when it hit. And it's like ripping shit up as the characters are running from it. It's obviously not realistic, but it looks kick ass. It sounds amazing. And this new one just had kind of a more realistic approach to tornadoes and how they looked. And they look great, by the way, but it's not as exciting to watch. I did mention this in my quick review. I did think this one was a little bit more intense though, because it looked more realistic. I was genuinely concerned for people in this one, whereas the last film, they were kind of heroic. I wasn't ever concerned they were going to die or anything. They were just cool ass scenes. And I was more interested in them as people and the relationships. And, you know, for instance, the aunt, that stuff was all very good. I already mentioned the ending. Glenn Powell runs and gets the girl and they hug and embrace and whatnot. And that's pretty much where they leave it open ended for more Twisters movies in the future. Will we get them though? Well, the box office is always the determining factor. It's probably doing all right. I think it had a $200 million budget, which means it's gonna have to make probably 500 million in order to be a success because you have to double it and all that shit. We'll find out, we'll see. Deadpool and Wolverine is out next week already, so that's gonna be the end for the Twisters budget. <laughs> I don't know, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be interesting. I would just like if they tried a little bit more in the creativity department. It's not like Twisters had to be again about storm chasers and launching something up into the Twister. Oh, also, I didn't even get to the main finale where uh, it goes into the town, it has a cool firestorm tornado, Glenn Powell's at a theater with the other people and he's trying to keep people safe and Katie solos it at an F5 with a whole bunch more of the concoction she made. And of course it works, but like when the fuck else, how are you gonna even use this technology? You're gonna have to, it took so much to stop this tornado and you basically had to be on top of the thing in order for it to work. It just seems like such an impractical application unless they find a way to, to have like missile defense systems where they can launch that powder shit all over the place easily. I just don't see it working in any sort of practical way. Those are my thoughts. Did you love this movie? Did you hate it? Are you indifferent? Did you think, eh, I've already seen this before much better. I kind of agree with all of you. I definitely don't have like the softest spot for these nostalgia films. I, I don't give them a pass just because it's like, oh, I remember that stuff from before. They're doing it again. I remember. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Please like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. This isn't like a typical type of review for me, but I'm always here to entertain. That's that's the end goal and hopefully I did a little bit. All right, hope to see you next time. Take care.